What's up viewers and welcome to another episode of Cheers Reviews. I'm your host Jimmy and today we're going to talk about the ultimate base starter pack. There are plenty of pre-made starter packs out there for base but today I'm going to show you how to get the best bang for your buck. Now that we're putting together a custom hand-picked starter pack, you've got the freedom to get creative and show a little bit of your personality. Now what's prompted me to do this is that my friend's younger brother has shown a keen interest in playing the bass guitar, but he has no idea where to start looking. They've been working a summer job, saving every cent, and has a budget of $450. As I mentioned before, there are really good pre-made starter packs for bass out there already, such as the one from Squire, but that retails for $689, which is well outside the budget. So, in this video, I'm gonna run through the top five must-have items for any bass starter pack, so let's get to it. Item one, bass guitar. Starting off with the most obvious one is the bass guitar. There are so many options out there which initially can be really daunting and a little bit confusing. Ideally you want something easy to play and easy to maintain and it ultimately sounds good. Oh, and it's got to look cool too, don't forget that bit. The biggest tip if you've just started out playing the bass guitar is to keep it simple. Why? Well, you want to give yourself the best chance of learning the basics, comfortably jam along with your buddies, and not have the constant hassle of maintenance issues. My first suggestion here is to stick to four strings, especially if you're just starting out. If you're getting lessons and learning the ropes, I can guarantee that most of the exercises, scales, and play-alongs are all going to be specifically designed for the four string bass. And the second suggestion is to get a passive bass. In short, I wouldn't suggest getting a bass that requires batteries to work, and these are also known as active basses. Reason being is that active EQs can get a little bit confusing, and you also don't want to be stranded with a dead battery hoping that your folks remember to get one from the grocery store. And lastly, make sure that it's comfortable to play. Sounds obvious, but avoid anything that's too heavy or poorly weighted. A great example of what not to get as your first bass is the Epiphone SG bass. I'm sorry, I know they look really cool, but they are impossible to play sitting down. Okay, so with all that in mind, my suggestion is the SX VEP 62B PJ Vintage Style Electric Bass. Yes, it's a mouthful to say, but wow, what an awesome bass. These are commonly found online for about $249. It's made superbly well, has a beautiful, tinted, glossy, easy to play neck, and it even comes with a free gig bag. You'll also be able to get a heap of different tones out of the P and J pickup configuration, and overall, I think they just look so cool. And there's a bunch of different colors that you can get. Oh, geez. Now I really wanna get one. No, no, no. I've got enough bases. Let's move on. Item two, bass amp. Next up, bass amps. Just like bass guitars, there are so many choices for you to choose from, from little tiny headphone amps all the way up to huge eight speaker fridge-like beasts. Once again, let's keep it simple. When starting out, you want an amp that's easy to use, easy to maintain, and something that isn't gonna annoy your neighbors. And one thing I can't stress enough is that you're looking for a bass amp. They're specifically designed to withstand and project the frequencies that are coming from your bass guitar. And let me tell you, if you plug a bass into a guitar amp or an acoustic guitar amp, it's not going to end well. Now, my friend's family all live in an apartment in the city, so we want something that isn't going to result in a noise complaint, but also not take up too much room. With that in mind, my pick is the Vox Pathfinder 10B bass amp. This is a pint-sized 10 watt dual speaker bass amp, and because it's a solid state amp, you'll never have ongoing maintenance issues such as swapping out the tubes. It's also got a really simple EQ, bass, and treble. This will allow you to easily find the sound that you're after. And finally, it's got a neat headphone jack, which is super handy if you wanna play late at night and not wake up the neighborhood. These can be found online for 119 Aussie dollary dos and represent great value for money. Oh, and did I mention they look wicked? Item 3, Leaves and Cables. That's right, leads and instrument cables. We rarely talk about them, but they are one of the most important parts of any bass setup. There's no excuse for having a dodgy lead, so let's get it right from day one. The last thing any bassist wants is a lead crackling in and out during a set, or even worse, 
dying during a song. When I was in high school, I learned a hard lesson to always have a good lead. I was playing in a jazz band and halfway through the set, my lead died. Of course, this was the lead that came free with my first bass. And anyway, there was a room full of people and a deafening silence of no bass. So kids, please, don't make the same mistake as me. Get a good lead. A good lead can last you for years and years. The lead that I'm currently using at the moment has been with me for nearly 10 years. I bet that there's a handful of people watching right now that have probably had theirs for longer. So let me know how many years in the comments below. My suggestion here is the Ernie Ball 10 foot braided instrument cable. They're very durable, they come in a massive range of colors, and they also come with a really handy 90 degree angle on one side. They do come in a different range of lengths, but I think 10 feet is a perfect middle ground for practicing at home, or practicing in the rehearsal room, or even going to your lesson. These are commonly found for $36, and are going straight in our basket. Item four, strap. Another easily overlooked item, but really important to get it right. A good strap will safely and reliably connect to your base, holding it close to your body to suit your playing position. There's only two real tips here. The first one is to make sure it's got enough adjustability to suit your playing position. Whether you're going full 1999 Mark Hoppus down to your knees, or vintage style Yako Pistorius right up at the chest. It's completely up to you. The second tip is to make sure that the ends of the strap have a good quality material the eyelets do have a tendency to wear out sometimes, so keep an eye on them. Having a strap fail is no bueno. My suggestion is the Planet Waves Polypropylene Instrument Strap. You can get them in a bunch of different colors, so choose which one you like, but my favorite is the green. And they're about 15 bucks, so we're definitely gonna get one of these. Item five, tuna. You can have the best bass, you can have the best amp, you can have the best gear, but if you're out of tune, you are out of the band. Just kidding, but seriously, having a tuner is super handy and a must have for any bassist. Once again, there's plenty of different types of tuners out there. You've got digital, analog, pedals, but a handy one to have on the go is a headstock clip-on style tuner. Let's see, well, they're easy to use, they're wireless, they fit in your pocket, and even though they're battery operated, they last for ages. Just make sure that you turn it off when you're done. So my suggestion is the Fender FT1 Pro clip-on tuner. They simply clip onto your headstock, switch it on, and tune away. The display is backlit as well, so if you're up on a dark stage, you can still see what you're doing. And the best bit is that the color of the screen will turn green when you're in tune. How cool is that? These are around $22 and they're worth every cent. So in summary, for bass guitar, I've chosen the SX VEP62B vintage style electric bass for its versatile PJ pickup configuration, value for money, and playability. For the bass amp, I've chosen the Vox Pathfinder 10B bass amp because of its easy to use EQ and handy headphone jack. For leads, I've chosen the Ernie Ball 10 foot braided instrument cable because of their durability and that handy 90 degree angle on the instrument side. For straps, I've suggested the Planet Waves polypropylene instrument strap because of its durability and lengthy adjustability to suit your playing position. And finally, for tuners, I've chosen the Fender FT1 Pro clip-on tuner because of its small, handy size and easy to use nature. So with our top five here, we've come to a grand total of $441, which is $9 short of the $450 budget that we were given at the start. So now they have an extra $9 to grab a pack of picks. And there you have it folks, thank you so much for coming along with me to check out the ultimate base starter pack. Let me know what your thoughts were in the comments below. Let me know if I missed anything. Is there anything that you'd swap out? And if you liked today's video, please give me a thumbs up. It's how I know that I'm doing a good job. If you liked any of the music from today's video, you can check that out on my other page, Maybe Sitter. I'll leave a link in the description below. And of course, if you want to see weekly base content, go ahead and smash that subscribe button down below. But until next week, take care, and I'll see you next time.